What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. As requested by many of you, today we're going to be working on back bending. When we're talking about back bending, we're not just referring to bending our spine, but instead we're looking to open up all the front side of our body, and that includes our shoulders, our chest, our abdomen, our quads, and our hip flexors. The two main reasons why we want to open those areas are first to simply improve our posture by contrasting all the non-functional positions that we do all day long whether that is sitting down in front of your computer or just standing looking at your phone. We also tend to perform so many pushing movement patterns like the bench press for example that further facilitates the flexing of our spine and leads to a massive roundness of our back. Back bending is an opportunity for us to balance that out and improve our posture and overall quality of life. The second reason would be to achieve some skills like the wheel, the scorpion and hollow back. Whichever reason you choose to embrace your back bending journey is definitely a very smart decision to do. Back bending is one of those things that take a lot of time, patience and consistency in order to be able to safely bend into extension without compromising the health of our spine. It is a practice that must be taken very slowly and mindfully to avoid any potential damage to our low back. This routine is meant to be for all levels. I will give modifications for all the poses if you are a beginner, as well as giving you more advanced variations if you are a little bit more advanced. That's all I wanted to cover before we begin. So without further ado, I'll see you in your mat. All right, guys, so let's begin. We're gonna begin a standing. Put your feet about a shoulder width apart. We're going to place our hands on our lumbar spine. And what I want you to do on this exercise is posteriorly tilt your pelvis, meaning you are engaging your glutes, your quads, as well as your core. And what that is going to do is going to prevent us from bending too much on our low back, which most of us are super flexible. But when we're working on back bending, we really wanna focus on opening first the shoulders, then the upper back, then the mid back, and later on, then you can start bending up in your lumbar spine. So you're gonna place your hands on your lumbar spine, engage your core, inhale, lift your chest as high as you can, push your hips forward with your hands, keep lifting your chest up, and we're just gonna hold here for about 10 seconds to start warming up on our backs. Keep a smooth breathing throughout the entire practice. It is very hard to breathe when we're doing back bendings, so if you feel like it's becoming way too hard to breathe, just back off a little more. Don't go too deep too fast. Inhale, lift a little higher. Exhale, push your hips a little forward and bend a little more. Release. We're gonna do one more round. This time we're gonna bring our hands overhead. But if that felt like way too much and it's hard to breathe and you're feeling like kind of pain on your low back, you can repeat that modification. But if you're a little bit more advanced, you're going to bring your hands overhead this time. So stand shoulder width apart, bring your hands up, interlace your fingers on top of you. Open first through the shoulders by sending your chest forward as well as up. Also contract your glutes like we did before. Start sending your hips forward and start bending from the upper back first, then from the middle back. Push your hips a little more forward if you can and hold for five. and release. As you can see, it becomes like really hard to breathe the deeper you go into your back bends. So again, take this practice super, super slow. Then we're gonna go towards the wall. We're gonna do two variations of a wall shoulder opener. First one, we're going to stand at about a leg distance apart from the wall. You're gonna place your hands shoulder width apart and you're going to send the chest forward and imagine the crown of your head getting towards the wall. Here I want you to do the same. Instead of anteriorly tilting your pelvis, I want you to posteriorly tilt your pelvis. So we focus first on the shoulders, then on the upper back, then on the middle back. And if you get to this point, then I'm allowing you to anteriorly tilt and work also on the lumbar spine. Hold here for about three more seconds. Three, two, one, and release. Give it a little shake to the arms. We're gonna repeat that exercise, but right now we're gonna get a little bit closer towards the wall, and we're gonna do what it's called a poopy pose, but using the wall. 
Can I place your hands? Right now, I'm separated about a feet distance apart, maybe a little more. And from here, you're going to first get the chest towards the wall. Lift your head. We're also stretching our throat. So you slide down by putting your shin towards the wall and you start sliding down, opening up through the chest and through the shoulders. Keep pushing your chest towards the wall and hold here for five seconds. If you don't feel the stretch, you can just lower down a little more. Hold it here. Three, two, one, and release. Again, give a little shake to the hands. And now we're gonna go into our belly. Place your hands about shoulder width apart. Get into your chest. We're gonna start with a set of mini cobra first. Bring your hands not to your chest, but a little bit backwards to your chest. Put your feet together, point it up. Engage your glutes. I want you to engage your glutes the entire practice. This is going to protect your lumbar spine the entire time. So no like a massive engagement in your glutes, but just a slight engagement that protects your lumbar spine. From here, you're gonna press with your arms, lift your chest up. Your shoulders are going backwards, and I don't want you to shrug, but instead send your shoulders down and back. Keep breathing, and we're gonna hold here for about five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Take a little break, put your arm by your side. The next round that we're going to do is going to be a full cobra, but again, if the mini cobra is way too much already for you, you can just repeat the mini cobra and don't go to the full cobra. But if you're ready, bring your hands a little bit below your chest, engage your glutes, inhale, lift your chest, pause a little exhale, inhale, lift your chest as high as you can go, keeping your shoulders back and down. Keep driving your hips forward. You're using your hands to actually pull yourself forward instead of just going back and compressing your lumbar spine. We're trying to create extension through the chest by bringing our chest up and forward. Hold here for three, two, one, and release. So by now, your back should be pretty warm. Again, if you're feeling like any pain, that means that you're going too far too soon and you gotta step it back a little more. This practice, as I said, is about going slowly and about being mindful about each one of the movement that we're going to do and being safe in the process. Next one is going to be locus post. We're going to interlace our fingers behind our back. Inhale, lift your chest and bring your shoulder blades together so we open our chest. Your hands are sending back at the same time your chest is sending forward. And on the next inhale, I want you to lift your feet and hold for five seconds. Five, four, keep squeezing your back together, standing your shoulders back. Three, keep lifting your chest a little higher, your legs a little higher as well. Two, one, and release. Take a little break. The next one we're going to do is going to be a full bow pose. This is kind of a intermediate to advanced position. So if this feels way too much for you, just repeat the locus pose. For the bow pose, you're going to first grab from the inside of your feet with, I'm starting with my left. Then you go to the other side, you bend your right knee and you grab the inside of your right foot. Then you go forward. Your shoulders, again, are going back and down. You open up through the chest. If this feels already on a stretch, you can stay here. But if you want a deeper stretch, on the next inhale, start lifting your legs. At the same time, you're lifting your chest. You're using your quads to pull your shoulders back and to go deeper into the position. We're gonna hold here for about five seconds. If you need more, always go a little higher opening more through the chest. And if that feels too much, then you cannot even breathe. Just back up. Three more seconds. Three, two, one, and release. Place your hands in the mat. Bring your left knee 
forward and your right knee is lower down for a low lunge. Inhale and release your hands from the mat. Your toes, you're gonna untuck your toes. From here, this is basically a lizard lunge that is gonna open up our hip flexors, but we are also going to focus on opening up our back. So what I want you to do is drive your hips as forward as you can go, but at the same time, you're not compressing down, but you're also sending your chest up. So your hips are going forward and down, and your chest at the same time is going up and back at the same time. From here, put your hands on your lumbar spine so you protect your lumbar spine. Inhale, lift your chest a little higher. Exhale, go a little deeper, but at the same time, you go backwards into your back bend. I'm gonna hold you for about three seconds. Three, two, one, and release. If that feels like too much, you're just going to repeat that exercise. Again, don't go way too deep. If you're feeling like you cannot even breathe or if like an uncomfortable position to be, well, back bendings are really, really uncomfortable at the beginning. After that, you start getting used to it, but I don't want you guys to just go way too deep and then tomorrow you're just gonna have a massive low back pain. And I really don't want you guys to go through that. So if that was way too much, you can just repeat that and don't go as far. But if you're a little bit more advanced, we're gonna do the same with your hands overhead. So first, send your hips forward, lift your chest and or abdomen, bring your hands up, interlace your fingers, and exhale, go forward, the same time you're going up. So you should feel the stretch all the way into your hip flexors, all the way into your abdomen, all the way into your chest, as well into your shoulders. Inhale, lift your chest a little higher, exhale, fall a little deeper. We're gonna hold here for about five seconds. If you're feeling optimistic, you can just bend your right foot and try to reach for your hand. Three more seconds. Three, two, one, and release. We're gonna switch sides, place your hands on the mat, bring your right knee forward, place your left knee on the mat, untuck your toes, First round is going to be with your hands on your lumbar spine. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, drive your hip forward. Inhale, lift a little higher the chest. And exhale, bend backwards. Keep breathing here for about five seconds. Try to always go to a place where you can actually breathe. Maybe not naturally, but that at least you can breathe. That you're not going to a place where the breathing is completely stopped. Inhale, lift a little higher. Exhale for the last second. Push your hips forward and release. Again, we're gonna go for a second round with our hands overhead, but if that is too much, you can just repeat that variation. One more time, untuck your toes, drive your hips forward. Inhale, lift your hands up and exhale, start bending backwards. Chest is going up, hips are going forward slight engagement into the glutes and think about bending first from the shoulders second from the upper back then the middle back and then you're gonna attack the low back three more seconds three two one and release next one bring the right knee that is in front to the back and put both knees together we're going to go for camel pose again camel pose is kind of an advanced position so i'm going to give you two variations we're going to start with the easiest one and then if you want to go deeper i'm going to allow you to go deeper on the second round so first let's start with our uh, toes tucked under which is easier than if you have your feet planted but if you already got some practice on this pose you can start with your feet pointed so flex your feet toes tuck under, inhale lift your chest, put your hands behind your lumbar spine, push the hips forward, engage your glutes, inhale lift your chest a little higher and just hold here for about three seconds, actually five seconds, four, keep breathing, three, two, keep driving your hips forward, one, and release. 
going to your knees to get a little break. Again, the second round, right now we're going to release the hands and we're gonna to try to grab our ankles. And if you haven't tried this pose before, I recommend you keep your toes tucked under, but if you had more practice, let's do it with our feet pointed. So inhale, lift your chest, start with your hands again on your lumbar spine, drive your hips forward. Now you're gonna release one hand, in this case I'm releasing my left hand, you're gonna grab one feet. The tendency here is going to be to just compress back. I want you to keep sending your hips forward while at the same time you're lifting your chest and only then you grab it. And if you really can grab the foot, that means that you should just stay right here and don't just go too deep just because you want to get the pose, but actually feel the pose. So grab your left foot, then grab the right foot. From here, I want you to inhale, lift your chest higher, drive your hip forward and relax your neck for five seconds. Three, two, one, and release. You're gonna stay on your knees and we're gonna go into a hero pose. So lower down, bring your butt towards the mat. If this feels already uncomfortable, you can just stay right here to stretch your quads. We're gonna start to come back into our forms. And again, if this is enough a stretch for you, you can hold it here. And if you want to get a little deeper, just start moving your elbows forward, coming down into your back. Whichever place you are in the pose, we're going to hold here for five breaths, just to catch our breathing up to prepare our body for the final poses. Again, whichever stage you are at, it doesn't really matter how the pose looks. You can place a pillow or something if this feels way too uncomfortable, or you can always stay on your forearms. Three more breaths in here. If you are on your back, you can place your right hand on your belly to make sure you're doing diaphragmatic breathing. Inhale as deeply as you can. Make sure you're lifting the hand. I mean, the belly is lifting your hand and the exhale, you're letting everything out. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, everything out. Slowly come back up. Now we're gonna prepare our body for wheel pose. We're gonna be doing two sets of bridge, which is basically an easier, a very easier variation from the wheel pose. And then at the end, we're just gonna try to attempt that wheel pose. So for bridge, lay down on your back, keep your feet about shoulder width apart with your knees bent. And you're going to use your elbows and the strength of your core and your glutes to lift your body up and just hold here. If you want a little more, you can always interlace your fingers behind your back and expand your chest a little more. Try not to relax, but always keep the glutes engaged as well as the quads. Two more seconds, two, one, and release. Try to keep your breathing, only two breaths to prepare us for the second round. One more time, use your elbows to lift. First, your hips, second, your upper back and your mid back. And lastly, if you wanna add a little more, you can interlace your fingers and bring yourself up. Also, I'm not using the block today, I'm not demonstrating anything, but in this pose, you can actually place a block right here beneath your seat bones and it actually feels pretty comfortable. And if you wanna hold this pose for longer, that's a, an amazing tool to have to do that. Last breath. And release. So for the last pose, we're gonna be attempting the wheel pose, which as many of you may already know, the wheel pose, it is kind of an advanced position to be in. It involves a lot of flexion in the shoulders, opening through the chest, our abdomen, our hip flexors, our quads. So it's basically a full combination of all the back bending that we've been doing so far. And if you are really a beginner, I recommend that you put something to elevate yourself, to elevate your feet, so you can get uh, easier into the position. Uh, it is a bit harder to actually push yourself up when you have something elevated, but it is a lot easier on your shoulders. So we're gonna start first round with our feet elevated, 
and then I'm just going to demonstrate it without it. So for all my advanced folks, can do it without the elevation. So place your hands on something elevated. The elevated, the more elevated the surface is, the easier it's going to be on your shoulders, but again, the harder it's going to be to push up. So find an elevation that you can actually work on your flexibility and don't kill your shoulders in the process. Place your hands next to your ears. Put your feet on the elevated surface. We begin by lifting our hips first. Engage your glutes in the process, then start pushing with your shoulders and put your head first. Relax your head, hold here for about one second, and if you feel ready, keep pushing through the arms and send the chest back while extending your legs. Again, I don't want you to compress our lumbar spine, but actually create like a C by extending through the shoulders first, upper back then, mid back last. Hold here for about three seconds if you are with me. You can always leave the pose whenever you feel you're ready. But if you are with me, two more seconds. Two, one. Slowly come down, put your head. Slowly come down, bring your hips down. So we're just going to be doing one more round of the wheel pose. This time with the, without the elevation. But again, if you need the elevation, by any means, stay to the elevation. I'd rather you use something elevated that you being like right here struggling to actually push, push yourself up. That's just going to put way too much stress on your lumbar spine, on your shoulders, and it's gonna do more harm than good. So always modify the poses to your level. As I always say, it doesn't really matter how the pose look, as long as you're actually feeling the stretch and the pose is working with you. So place your hands next to your ears. Feet are about shoulder width apart. You can start with your feet more forward. I mean, the longer the distance between your feet and your hands, the easier the stretch is going to be. And the closer you are towards your hand, the deeper the stretch is going to be. We're going to start farther away, and then we're going to start, start to walk forward to deepen the stretch if you are at that level. If not, just stay in wheel pose. From here, inhale, lift your hips first. Press strongly with your feet and your hands. Now use the strength of your shoulders to push yourself up, get into your head. Hold here for about a second. On the next inhale, lift higher. From here, open through the chest, relax the head, try to extend your feet. If this is too much, always bring your feet a little forward so the stretch is not as intense. If you want to go a little deeper, bring your feet forward. At the same time, you press again. If you wanna go a little deeper, Bring your hands forward and keep opening through the chest. Hold here for about four seconds only. Again, if you want to lift the pose, you can always lift the pose. Three, two, one. Slowly come down, put your head first. Slowly lower your hips down. So to finish the practice, we're going to be doing just a seated forward fold. When I'm working on back bending, I got this concept from Dylan Werner. He says that when we're working on back bending, you wanna always keep that shape in your back. So your spine start creating that shape over time. Because if you are doing back bending forward fold, back bending forward fold, then you don't get your body a chance to adapt to that position. But at the end of the practice, I always want to do a counter pose, at least just one, and your body will really, really thank you for it because if you just do like a bunch of back bending like we just did and then you just go home, you might feel like a little off balance. So you, we're just going to do one round of forward fold. Inhale with your chest, exhale, fall with your back flat, place your hands, and if you feel ready, relax into the stretch. You can place a block. I finally use the block at least at the end. Place your forehead in the block or pillow or something. We're just gonna relax here for about 30 seconds. Remove the block if you don't need it.
and slowly start coming back up. Last to finish off, I said that was the last one, but there is one more. When I do a twist, again, when I'm doing back bending, I like to finish off with a counter pose and as well as a twisting because we've been doing so much back bending. Now we're doing forward fall. It's always good to turn our spine in different directions. So bring your left knee towards you. Inhale with your right hand up. Bring your elbow towards your left knee and exhale, twist towards the left, looking at your left shoulder. Try to keep your hips square. You're not actually completely twisting, but your hips are square. You're twisting from your belly. Release, bring the right knee towards you. Inhale, lift your left hand towards the sky. Bring your elbow towards the right knee, to the outside of the knee. Inhale, lift your chest and exhale, fall. Inhale back to center. You can stay sitting down. You can go into Shavasana, laying down. I'm going to stand up as usual to say goodbye to the camera. So there you have it, guys. This is a back bending flexibility routine that, as I said, don't do it more than two or three times per week. Allow your body to recover. And again, it is for all levels. If you are a beginner, you can just stick to the first variations of each pose and maybe just do half of the routine and then start building your way up until you can do the full routine and do the advanced variations. And if you are a little bit more advanced, you can go ahead and do the entire full routine and even add a set to each one of the exercises, as well as if you are really, really advanced, you can do the full routine and then go ahead and practice your scorpion and your hollow backs because doing this routine prior to doing this move, you're going to notice a huge, huge difference. You might be able to touch your head with your feet for the first time. Guys, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up to support the channel. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to reach 50K. It feels completely unreal. It's only been a year since I opened this channel and we're already 50K strong. So thank you guys so much for the support. If you ever watch a video, if you ever hit that like button, if you ever comment on any of the video, I wanna let you know how much I appreciate every single one of you. So guys, thank you, thank you so much. If you happen to be new to this channel, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any content in the future. And as always guys, I will see you all next week. Let's go.